Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is, ooh, I think it's episode four. I, <laughs> I tapped in and I forgot what I said. I think it was episode 534. Um, <laughs> I trust it was. You'll see in the, in the caption which it is. And the topic today is, interesting enough, um, another lesson in being wrong and how to correct. So before I jump into that and explain more detail what I mean by that, because there was a predecessor to this, let me start by introducing myself and what these daily talks are about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day now for almost two years, I've done these Facebook Lives every day for the last 19, at least 18 months. Um, these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today is episode number 534, I think. I didn't remember what I said in the title, so you'll see more than I will until I sign off. And the topic today is actually a part two, because yesterday I talked about something about um, how we language things incorrectly, and this is gonna be a second part that I, I hinted at yesterday. So today's topic is another lesson in being wrong and how to correct. And I'm using this as a language instruction, but the truth is it applies to relationships, any form of relationship, because if you communicate with anybody, that's some form of communication and some form of relationship. And yesterday I talked about some of the, I think it was four or five key words. Again, I don't know if these are all like scripted, but I remember them. Um, and words that you use, I'll just recap quickly, that will get in the way of you having what you want. Words like try, have to, should, can't, and there was one more in there. There is a, there is a fifth one, and it escaped me. It's in the broadcast. Go watch the broadcast, you'll see them. But I realized in the middle of it, or at the end of it, and I actually dropped a hint about how the challenge we have Thank you for all the love, Jimmy. Nice to see you in my broadcast, by the way. I see all the hearts popping up. Um, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it started out on Facebook Live. So Facebook Live first, then YouTube, then my podcast. I'll give the links at the end. So today I want to cover some things. And, and this is actually from NLP, but I'm giving it to you as my gift. <laughs> you know, I've studied 15 years of NLP to get this, or two years or, or six months, whatever you do as a program. But the truth is, these are fundamental things that aren't necessarily NLP-centric, but they're really useful to know where you might be off track. In your communication. So let me say this to the ladies first. Well, you know, either one, to be honest. If you're single looking for a relationship and you keep saying all the good ones are taken, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's simple. Because you're using what I what's been known in NLP terms as a global modifier or a global deletion. Because by saying that all the good ones are taken, you're making a massive assumption that you know that everybody on the planet is already taken because you don't know if that's truth or not. So you're making an assumption. So all the good ones are taken is not true. So for those of you who are single looking for love and thinking that you're never gonna have a chance, good luck. You have chances now. There's opportunities because there are good ones out there. So that is a blunt reminder if all the good ones, good ones are taken is a simple instruction to say, stop saying that to yourself because it's not true. And the ones I'm gonna give you are reminders of things that you might be using in your language that will not support you if you wanna have clarity, direction, and success in your life, in every area, not just relationships, but every area. So, here's a few more to consider. Um, let's think, there's a few of them out there I'm playing, dabbling these. So, okay, so if you say that all good ones are taken, saying that there's no one out there who will love me is just as bad because it's the same exclusionary deletion of everybody. And the thing about these, global, as I call them, global deletions, global modifiers, what they are is they're making massively assumptive reasons and judgments and deletions of what's possible and it excludes it from your life. So if you want to create what you want in your life, and I mentioned this in the last broadcast, it's good to be clear about your languaging. And these are simple things. And it's not really a law of attraction as much as it's simply an understanding about how to articulate what you want, what your needs are, what you, what you want to share, and what you want to declare to the world. So by having these words, yes, definitely, Jermaine, all, all unproductive are words and terms. Well, you're very, you're very, very welcome. I'm glad you like the appreciate. So I'm glad you appreciate the real these realignment. These are realignments for everybody. So, and of course, I'm reminding myself as I do this because none of this stuff is really just for you. <laughs> Ninety percent of the time, I do these broadcasts, so I remember this stuff too. So we're in this together. Um, so everyone, so if all the good ones are taken, not true. There's no one out there who's gonna love me, another deletion. Because the thing is, when you make a, a statement that excludes every possibility, you're actually excluding every possibility. Like, duh, rocket science. This is the truth. 
So when you are willing to consider possibilities, then you want to modify your language and change how you say things, realignments as Jermaine put it, so that you say things differently to open up space for getting what in. So, you know, hang on, you're responding to yourself? Oh, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was looking the way it came up on the comments on the screens, it threw me for a second. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's Facebook Live first, and then interactive comments on Facebook Live. So next time, watch me on Facebook Live. Um, thing, word, terms like um, never is another one of those risky words. Like you say that, you know, um, I've never, I'll never be loved the way I want to be loved. That's another one of those statements that's declarative that says no possibility. Not true. And I'll give you some suggestions about course corrective in a moment. I want to give some of the bigger words that are the deletions and the removals. There are some big ones out there too that people use, you know, like everybody always does something. Well, maybe, maybe not. Again, everybody always, those are, again, exclusionary words that only include possibility and make it one way only. It's like having a paintbrush and painting everything black and there's no white there. You have to have a spectrum as a way. So you gotta have room for possibilities. So um, words like everybody, always, never. Um, there's a few other ones, there's a big ones out there. Let me remember those ones because they're coming up. But you know what, I'm, I'm giving you a, th a thematic because there are words you can use and there are pl plenty more out there that are in the same bucket of global statements. And global means everything or inclusive. So if you're saying that you know all people are wrong, that's a very simple assumption. You know, and, and the truth is that maybe everybody's all wrong at some point in time, but to say everybody's wrong is an assumptive question. And it's the assumptions that get you in trouble. So it's gotta be clear that you wanna know what you're saying is accurate or at least truthful, so you can be less in the wrong and more in the right, so to speak. And so yesterday I talked about that, about how you can be wrong and do, how you can be right and yet so wrong using those definite words that we're not working for you. This is the second part of that. So again, I invite you, what, invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast as well because there were some key teachings in that might be of use to you. So this one is about the, what I'm calling the global languaging we use as a bad habit. And again, a lot of stuff came from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, for those who are not sure what NLP stands for. But I wanted to just drop them in because they're relevant, useful, and um, challenging because they get in the way. So certain declaratives that are that global, you know, when you say the whole world is against me, for example, it's not true. Maybe three people are, but the whole world isn't, just to be clear. So these, again, global wordings and these, these um, it's inclusive and a negative word because it includes everything. So, you know, nobody ever does this. Is that true or not? Whatever, they, whatever this is, and I'm not gonna give you necessarily examples, but just be aware of in your own memory and experiences, we've said things like this in your conversations. If you have, you might wanna just think about adjusting it in future because it's getting in the way of you having what you want. And I'm saying this, and I'll give you that, mo I'll give you that piece in a moment, and as I'm jumping ahead. Let me back up a second. So, nobody ever does this, or everybody always does this. Those statements are very exclusionary and limiting. Yeah, Jimmy, exactly, this always happens. Does it? You know, it's like forest fires always happen, for example, in California. Well, yes and no. They happen frequently, but they don't always happen because we don't have them all, all, um, every month of the year all year round. If, fire, if forest fires always happen, the implication is they never stop. Well, they do. We have them at certain times, but it doesn't happen always. So, you know, California's always having earthquakes. Well, not necessarily. Every few years may be the bump. There may be minimal ones every, every few weeks, every days, but it's not constant earthquakes. Same as Florida, it's always having hurricanes. Not true. But people had to say things like that that are very um, declarative and inaccurate. So again, you end up being wrong. So this is a reminder that what you may be using in your language is actually incorrect. And by listening to what you're saying, yes, you can listen to what you say, you can actually adjust your languaging to be less, um, that's what we're looking for, less blunderbuss. <laughs> I was thinking about shotgun, but it's like, no, more than that, blunderbuss. Like, like scattering everything with an assumptive reason about it, like painting everything with the same brush. That's a challenge in blocking your possibilities in life. This is a coaching tip, by the way, in any area of life, business, romance, sports, health, anything. You can make some really challenging things in the world by declaring things limiting this way, by excluding everything or including everything in a negative way. So the key, skip to that part, is that you have the ability to change your language. Yes, of course we do. We all have the ability to change your language. If we remember to listen to what we're saying, go, ah, let me adjust that. 
Uh, which was in conversation with a friend of mine yesterday, and I said something, and I went, well, hang on a second, let me, re- let me rephrase that. Because I realized I had to take back what I said and change it so that it would go forward the right way. You have the opportunity too. There's no rules that you can't do that. So you definitely can say things, and then if you, if you say things, you can just say, hang on a second, let me back up and rewrite that and say it a different way. And then you can be clean again. The powerful way of doing this is simply to remember that not everything is one way. Not everybody is one way. Not you know, the whole world is not this way or that way. I would say that you can say some things that are facts, like everybody breathes, say for example. When it comes to relating to yourself, you might say most, some. Sounds silly, but those two words will make a big difference. Some people I know are challenged by relationships. Most people I know um, are conscious beings who do spiritual work, because most of my friends are, so that's an accurate statement. But all the people I know, no, not true. So using that sort of framing, you can reduce the um, assumptive reasoning and have a much more accurate, conscious, and safe way of speaking. Because the reality, let me say this. That's interesting. Okay. I've talked before about how we have a bad habit of sub, sub, sabotaging ourselves by the way we language, language, language things inside. And when we say things that are wrong, part of us knows that and will then feel depleted by it. It's a, it's a funny thing about this, but when we start saying things that are inaccurate and wrong, and we, part of us knows that, it will actually um, diminish our energy. It will diminish our health. It will diminish our well-being. So it's vital for your health, for your energy, for your well-being, to be more accurate in what you state. So it's good to be aware of what you're saying and conscious of the language you use when you're in conversation, whether it's written, whether it's verbal, whether it's in person. And by doing so, we, because I'm in the same conversation, learn how to be more... Um, Confident, comfortable, I see another C word, and accurate, I use that word, in our conversations. So this is a invitation to be aware of the language you use and the judgment you make. Because there are people I know, some people I know, to be clear, who I know run, run judgments almost subconsciously because they say things that are assumptive about one person because they have seen other people do it. And this is one of the things, the traps of this. When you have an experience with 10 people that do things a certain way that really really piss you off it's tendency to go you know what I'm going to assume that the 11th, 12th and 13th also piss me off which is not accurate but the thing is people do that because they get into this practice this routine but they start expecting that and the thing about this is this is the power of the power of creation if you start expecting that you'll start seeing that that's a whole other piece again which is about the law of attraction when you start expecting certain situations you'll start receiving those situations so if you are not willing to adjust your languaging to be available to a new possibility that's different, it's going to be hard for you to see that and experience that when it shows up. So for your own well-being, for your own peace of mind, for your own wholeness, I invite you to look at your language as a way to adjust, reframe, and um, re-express things so that you can have what you want and be more available to the good that's possible in your life. That's a nice little one to tie up a little bow in the end. I hope this has been of use to you. Um, this is my daily broadcast. I think that will give you some things to think about. There's a couple other words. I, I was trying to make some other global words I know off the top of my head. But always, never, all, none, and sort of the scale, the range. So there are plenty out there. I know you can find, think of some too. You can definitely, if you want to put some below, feel free to do so. Um, if you're having some challenges with the way you language stuff, it's part of my skill sets to help you with that. Feel free to reach out to me. I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me. You can sign up if you want to. That doesn't cost you anything. We set up a time to talk. Um, and 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 so your homework. Give your homework first, then I'll tell you the links where you can find my broadcasts. Do you love the ethereal eraser we all have so we can rewrite the story of our lives? I like that. Ethereal eraser. Nice one, Jermaine. It's, it's, a, it's a cool term. I like that. I might stick, well, I might borrow that, but I'll give you props. I, I, I tend to do the best I can to remember who said something, so if I use it, Ethereum Eraser, that's nice. All right. So, this is my daily Facebook Live, 5 p.m. Pacific time, usual time. I'm going to do this every day, seven days a week. Um, all right, here on Facebook Live. Um, replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Author, and I also put them out onto my social media. So, my social media is all my name, which is Barry Selby. So, on YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe there. You can watch them in the playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And also, they go to my podcast, which is on iTunes, and there it's Messages from the Masculine is the name of the podcast. You can subscribe there and download them as well. So if you're driving around or cycling, you other things where you can't watch the screen, you can listen to them that way. 
but frankly, um, I'm a bit behind on those, <laughs> just to be honest and transparent. So that's it for today. That's my broadcast. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, thank you for watching, as always. And um, you got your homework? Oh, homework. I didn't do that. Your homework. I skipped over that. Is watch your language. Simple as that. If you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, please watch that and today's. And the two combined will give you some awareness of what you might be saying that's not working for you. And if you take both of these to heart, you might find yourself in a much more empowered and inspirational way of living your life. So with that, I thank you for watching. You take care of yourself. It's mine now too. Thank you for that, Jermaine. Um, I appreciate you giving that. <laughs> so that I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Oh, one, one quick thing, because it's I got this, the music in my head. Um, if you haven't already gone see, this is totally a plug. Um, if you haven't already gone see Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, I went and saw it right this afternoon before I did this broadcast. So the song is blaring in my head right now. Um, highly recommend it. Powerful biopic and a beautiful um, tribute and, and Queen's music is amazing. So um, that's a quick plug. <laughs> I had to do that because I was watching it like two hours ago. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.